Right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Larry Phillips, and I'm your room host for the Federal Home Loan Bank Office Hours this morning. We're so excited that you have joined us today. Office Hours are a new addition to the conference this year and are meant for you to hear from different sectors impacting our housing work. These are meant to be conversational and interactive, and we hope you have time to ask all of your questions. A few housekeeping items for you all. All sessions are being recorded. When you are not asking a question, please remain muted. And Melody will be doing a slideshow presentation at the beginning. So if everyone could mute their lines and turn off their videos during that, that would be appreciated. And then um, I think what we will do afterward is when we're taking questions, you can come off mute and um, <clears throat> excuse me, ask them directly to Melody if you have any. Um, if you are not comfortable with that or your technology doesn't allow that, uh, please post your question in the chat or in the Q&A session and Whova will be monitoring both of those as well. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Melody at Federal Home Loan Bank of Des Moines. Thanks so much, Larry, appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, I have actually, uh, I do have a slideshow presentation, um, which I'm going to just sort of skim through for you all uh, to be able to discuss two areas of our programs, our affordable home, uh, housing program, which is our competitive uh, project-based funding, and then my program, which is down payment programs. Um, as Larry mentioned, I'm Melody Daw. I'm the down payment program manager for the Federal Home Loan Bank of Des Moines. Uh, if you have any questions, and I'll close with this slide as well, just some information regarding myself, how you can reach out to me. And we do work individually with uh, on technical assistance for our program use uh, with our members, as well as any uh, program partners they might be bringing into the use of the funding. So our agenda today is to talk about um, as an overview of Federal Home Loan Bank of Des Moines, who are our members, um, what is a member, and then uh, a slight overview of the AHP Competitive Homeownership Rental Program, as well as um, a bit more of a deep dive into our uh, grant products. So there are 11 federal home loan banks. Um, we all have the same mission within our department. It's called the Community Investment Department. Um, and uh, really the same mission throughout the system um, to uh, provide liquidity for member banks throughout the country. So the pandemic was a real test of our system efforts. Uh, we all um, use 10% of our annual income for affordable housing grants. How we administer those programs may differ from bank to bank, but it is intended for that uh, use. Uh, grant funds are available through partnership with an FHLB member, one of our home loan bank members. The green that you see on this screen is the Federal Home Loan Bank of Des Moines territory. We merged with the Seattle Bank in 2015. So we have the largest territory of any federal home loan bank uh, in the system. Our 13 states and three US territories cover 40% of the US land area, 30% of the native population, and we have 32 native CDFIs within our district as well. Uh, our um, Des Moines members and funding access to our community investment programs, um, you know, some bullet points here. All federal home loan bank Des Moines members have access to down payment funds through Homestart and NAHI. It's whether or not they choose to use the program. So as long as they complete an agreement, they're able to access these funds. Anyone who wants to use these funds working through must work through a member. And um, obviously for down payment, this is within an individual transaction. So every individual home purchase is accessed through a member uh, by a potential buyer and then submitted to our bank as an individual reservation to review. We have currently about 400 members uh, enrolled, but our total membership is closer to 1,200 banks within our um, the Federal Home Loan Bank of Des Moines. And um, our member participants are actually located here on our website. So anyone can see, they can search um, to see who's actually listed within our program usage, that there may be a bank in their area. And the competitive program is it has a sponsor slash developer and member relationship to access funding. It is project-based funding. It is competitive. We'll talk a little bit about that over the next couple of slides. Uh, this is not my program area, but I wanted to provide some information. So I have general overview. If you have further questions, I can um, connect you with the staff specific for this pro these programs. Uh, 
Um, it is a competitive subsidy award program. Um, it is subject to scoring uh, criteria, eligibility requirements, and feasibility guidelines. So project-based funding, you're going to need performance, um, who you're serving, uh, who, you know, make sure you fit within that requirement for this program. They, these funds can be used for rental or home ownership projects, and they assist households below 80% of area median income. Rental project has a few more requirements. 20% uh, of the house, households must be at or below 50% of meet, area median income. That is not a requirement within the home ownership AHP program or down payment. This is specific to rental. Uh, in 2022, the maximum subsidy award is 750,000 for a project, and that's up to 40,000 per unit of housing. We actually just closed our 2022 round. It's open for a period of time, uh, two days ago. And we've had quite a few applications, so our team's going to be quite busy for the next few months. Program guidelines are published annually in the AHP implementation plan, and that's actually for the down payment program as well as the competitive program. Every year we um, submit this implementation plan, can be found on our website, goes through our board approval process to try and meet the needs of what we're seeing um, throughout our district. A sponsor is an organization that applies for a subsidy award. They're usually nonprofits, um, governments that include Native American tribes or housing authorities that are building an affordable housing project. Um, the sponsor must be integrally involved in the planning, development, or management of the project. So they can't be a sort of name only silent partner. They are going to be responsible for accounting for where the money's going, whether or not disbursement can be made to them. So we need an, a very responsible entity when tied to these projects. For rental projects, sponsors have to have a controlling ownership interest in the project, not just a developer, but they must retain control. For-profits can apply, but they really, it's difficult for a for-profit to be awarded because they just don't get that funding that um, uh, really are, is necessary. Um, they can't get those points, so they're not as competitive. Uh, this is really targeted towards um, individuals who are less on the, on the for-profit side. And sponsors require the support of an FHLB Des Moines member to apply and to receive disbursement. So there has to be a connection between a member bank and a sponsor who wishes to apply to our program. That member takes on the responsibility of shepherding the sponsor through that process, receiving and dispersing funds to them, and they're accountable for projects not moving forward. So it's a strong relationship requirement. In rental projects, 20% of the households must be at or below 50% of median income, as we spoke about earlier. Uh, homeownership projects um, must be below 80% area median income. There has to be a demonstrated need for the subsidy. Um, that's not the case in down payment per se. Uh, so it's a little bit different. And the timing of the subsidy use, you have to be able to disperse, basically complete your project and disperse this funding that's been awarded to you within 36 months for rental projects and 24 months for homeownership projects. That's been very challenging over the last couple of years with the pandemic, but these are the federal regulations. So we are uh, very focused on keeping our um, sponsors and members on track with their projects. The retention of affordability deed restrictions. Um, there are 15 years for rental projects. So this um, deed restriction for this funding will stay with the property for 15 years. And it's five years for home ownership projects that include new construction or acquisition rehab. Uh, we may require repayment upon sale or refinance of assisted units, and that's really based upon several factors. In general, um, most of these can be forgiven after a couple of years, but there are a few pieces that um, may require some form of repayment. This is an overview of the scoring criteria. Basically, you can see um, the points that are on the left-hand side get to 100. Um, down here at the bottom of the screen, our last year's rounds, we awarded 71 projects, and the scores ranged um, at highest at 74.5. We really do get this granular because we do get some ties going, so um, we have to, uh, to be able to award more even-handedly. But you can see it's very difficult to get to 100 points. Um, if we had a bank district priority, then that would obviously enable a little bit more of that. Um, the highest points are to underserved communities and income targeting. Um, followed by smaller ones, donated or discounted property, um, you get some points because obviously that's less cost to the project. So it's a bit more um, uh, well-funded in these instances most often. 
but uh, this criteria criteria is general. This can change year to year depending upon any regulatory requirements from the FHFA or any board or AHAC um, committee approvals that are um, changing our priorities a little bit. In general, they stay within this threshold. I'm going to pause really quickly because I'm moving on to the down payment and see if there's any questions about AHP I might be able to answer. Melody, I don't see any in the chat currently, but um, if anyone would like to ask questions, please feel free to put them in the chat on the Q&A on the Whova website or, um, <clears throat> excuse me, unmute yourself and just ask the question directly. Okay. Well, I'll move forward and again, we'll have time at the end, so you'll have a little bit more of an opportunity to be able to answer questions, excuse me, ask questions. So moving into my area of expertise now, uh, Home Start and the Native American Home Ownership Initiative Program, or as we call it, NAHI. So we'll be referring to it, to it as NAHI throughout the slide presentation. This year, we funded uh, Home Start at $6 million. The maximum grant amount per household is $7,500 per unit, but a member doesn't have to use that full amount. They could use less if they want to, because there is a member cap, they may use less per unit to try and get additional units um, throughout the funding year. This is the maximum amount for the entire year. So um, once an award has been expended, we fund quarterly, but once it's been expended, that is the amount that we have available to um, for program use. And we funded NAHI at 400,000. It's significantly less uh, in comparison to HomeStart. Um, HomeStart is uh, much more eligible for use, but NAHI, the maximum grant amount is up to $15,000. So it has a much greater impact. Both of these funds are secured with a recorded deed restriction for a term of five years, and they are fully forgivable after that term has been met, or potentially forgivable before that. Uh, so for Home Start, um, I'm just going to have a bit of a slide presentation here to ask these typical questions. Who does it serve? Um, home Start is, serves first-time home buyers with incomes at or below 80% of the area median income. This is uh, county or state, um, or even the HOSTA. If we have a native buyer who's using Home Start, they can. Whichever of those limits is highest based on household size. Uh, and this would be the county state um, that you are purchasing the home in. Um, it is used for down payment, closing costs, or rehab assistance associated with the purchase of an owner-occupied home, and it's secured by a five-year deed restriction. It can also pay for home buyer education, but only up to $250. So that's, that must be a combination of something else. Um, you can use uh, HomeStart in the US, the three US territories in our district as well. Uh, Basically, if, as long as we have a member who has a charter that is able to lend in any state in the U.S., they are able to use our grant funds in any state in the U.S. Funds are released at the beginning of each quarter. Um, we, do a, a, we basically do four quarterly distributions, so we are actually coming up on our July 1 distribution. We're um, out of funds, which is basically we do have fund cycle in and out, but we have fully expended um, the grant funding for this quarter and it's been reserved. So um, we put more money in each quarter, so we'll be putting a million and a half more in in July 1. They are available on a first come, first serve basis, and we review those files in the order that they come in as well to just try and be as most even handed and to encourage our members to submit early so that they give their buyers enough time to collect documentation and answer any questions we have to make sure we hit that closing date. Um, the, the reason to use these funds is that really it lowers the payment for the buyer. It may um, provide those gap funds to support a higher purchase price or to cover those closing costs. Um, you know, that's a household um, incentive right there. And for our members um, and then potentially their partners, it improves that loan to value ratio. Um, maybe you could even in some of our states, well, it may not be true for everywhere, um, particularly in the Midwest, um, it could be up to 10% or even 20% of a home purchase where you can still buy a home occasionally at 60 or $70,000. So $7,500 goes a long way within those transactions. Um, you can reach new customers. Obviously, this can be targeted. We do not um, dictate how our member um, distributes these funds, who they choose to distribute them to. Um, they may choose to run a veterans program. They may choose to do some BIPOC outreach. 
um, it's entirely up to them. Uh, but they must, of course, meet the requirements of the program. Uh, and we and it's a good opportunity for them to enhance their community profile, as I mentioned. If they really have an underserved community that they want to reach, this is a great opportunity for them to target this funding. Um, members do advance the funds and we reimburse them. So um, they're very vested in the use of this program if they are doing it for the buyers. Uh, as I noted below, um, we reimburse them after um, the mortgage closes and all documentation has been provided and approved by the bank. So first time home buyer, um, this is a home start requirement. Income cannot exceed 80% of their immediate income. And that's established at the enrollment date. The enrollment date for our purposes is the date that the reservation is initiated in our system. So the documentation provided and required by us is, of, is the most current. They, um, HUD or NAHASDA limits can be used, but NAHASDA is only for eligible native buyers. Uh, the buyer must be under contract. They must have a signed purchase and sale agreement before a member can submit a reservation. So there's no pre-approval. An experienced member, um, we have an income calculation workbook and they should be doing um, that math ahead of time to see if their buyer is gonna qualify. Our math is slightly different than theirs would be. We're looking for all of the income. They're looking for the most reliable minimum amount they can qualify their buyer. So we're kind of working from opposite ends of the spectrum. We do have purchase price limits in every state that the buyer may be purchasing in. We post these limits for our own district on the website, but if you should have a buyer who's out of district, we look at that individually when a member contacts us and, and verify that purchase price is under that limit. Um, they have to be home ownership ready. So um, we do require a home buyer education class um, certificate submitted uh, for everyone on title. And um, we'll collect that at reservation. So we have a two-stage process. Registration, if someone's determined eligible, the member moves on to closing and then submits for disbursement to us. So we will collect that certificate before we approve a reservation. NAHI, very similar format here. Um, NAHI is for Native American, Native Alaskan, and Native Hawaiian home buyers with incomes at or below 80% of area median income. Native Hawaiian um, home buyers, uh, I'll have a little more information on who they are, but they must, um, just as a highlight, they must purchase on Hawaiian homeland uh, because they aren't in the federal, federally, excuse me, federally recognized tribe category. Um, so that's the distinction that, we've, um, that the uh, bank has made for that determination. Uh, grants are for down payment, closing costs or rehabilitation assistance. Um, associated with the purchase of an owner uh, occupied home, as noted. You will know in the first category, we did not say first time home buyer. Uh, if you are a Native American buyer, you are not required to be a first time home buyer. You cannot own a home at the time of application. Um, we, can, we do make some exceptions for first time home buyer status, really tied to those who only ever own with a spouse, um, you know, uh, displaced homemaker, that kind of thing. It's in our definitions. But in general, um, it's an opportunity. We recognize that home ownership, particularly for this um, demographic, is very challenging. So this is an opportunity for them to be able to move on and uh, purchase a home without being restricted within that um, guideline. Uh, you have to purchase and use NAHI within our 13 state district. And we're attempting to keep these funds within district. We do have quite a few tribes and native lands. Uh, but sometimes this gets moved out of district and we are actually the only federal home loan bank that offers a program like this within our um, set aside uh, DPA programs. So we're attempting to keep that money within our district to serve our um, customers and members best. Same process, funds are released at the beginning of each quarter and are available on a first come first serve basis. So we'll be adding 100,000 to NAHI on July 1. Um, and same purpose, you know, this, low, this lowers the payment, provides gap funds, and gives um, our members an opportunity to improve that loan to value ratio and reduce risk in their portfolio, reach new customers and really reach targeted customers. And same process, the member um, uh, provides the funding upfront and they are reimbursed after the mortgage closes and all documentation is provided. So the definition, as I alluded to in our previous slide, for Native American, Native Alaskan and Native Hawaiian is at least one adult member on title must be enrolled, an enrolled member of a US federally recognized tribe, a member or a shareholder of an Alaskan village or regional corporation, 
and then a native Hawaiian acquiring property on Hawaiian homeland. So that does not mean if we had a native buyer who was buying in Hawaii, they had to buy in Hawaii homeland. You can be native and purchase in Hawaii and not buy in Hawaiian homeland. It's just simply a native Hawaiian is required to do that. Uh, income cannot exceed 80% of area median income. And they, again, they must be under contract and not exceed the purchase price limits. And they must have their home buyer, edu home buyer education class completed at reservation. Some key information here, uh, income calculations are more conservative. Um, I spoke to this earlier. They will often be higher than the income calculation for the mortgage qualification. The bank counts all household income. So if you have someone who regularly receives gift fund support from family member, uh, is running a cash business, is um, running a part-time job, and maybe a mortgage lender is not counting that for repayment income, we count it because we are an income eligible program. So it's really important to capture all that information. Um, someone may be, uh, you know, it's up to them to decide if they're going to include their alimony or child support income for consideration for um, qualifying for the mortgage, but it must be disclosed to us because we are going to count it. So keep those pieces in mind um, when looking at these potentials. We do have a list of income to include and exclude on our website also under our income calculation guideline. Our, the first mortgage loans that these are coupled with must be at least five years in term, amortizing and not exceed the HOIPA threshold. We do test for this at reservation and disbursement. So this is really important to stay um, within that uh, um, non-predatory lending terms um, or else our funds cannot be used with this uh, mortgage. Subordinate amortizing liens also are tested to make sure they don't exceed HOIPA thresholds. And all other grants, deferred liens, et cetera, are acceptable and we will be in any position. We're not super proud about that. You know, we don't need to be number one. Um, our goal here is to make sure that we provide some additional affordability for your buyer. So if you have layered financing, we're well equipped to deal with that and um, can assist you if you should need some understanding on how to make that work. Our grant can be paired with conventional, FHA, USDA, VA, and portfolio products as well. Let me just close with this slide again. If you have any questions, please feel free, free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to um, walk you through the process or maybe um, connect you with that slide, you know, with the individual um, members in your area who you might be able to work with. And I would be happy to take any questions y'all might have right now. Yes, thank you, Melody, for your presentation. Anyone is welcome to ask a question by unmuting and asking directly, or you can send it through the chat or the Q&A box. I do have one to kick it off that Sarah Briggs asked. Um, Melody, she says, I hear that the feds are increasing interest rates today by another 75 basis points. That's a huge hike in housing payment. Any chance your per person amount would increase from 7,500 to higher for the Home Start program? Oh, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It will definitely not happen this year. We actually, um, that funding amount, the amount of the member cap, so the amount they can use out of that pool and the amount of the grant amount is set at the end of each year for the current um, IP coming up for the next year's IP. So those amounts will not change. It will require an IP change and board approval and because our funding is um, only at six million, we're really trying to make sure that our members can use it. Um, but that's always something we always hear. We'd like more money. We'd like to be able to use more money. Finding that balance is a challenge, but I appreciate your question. <laughs> um, just to be clear, our profits, 10% um, of our profits are is where our funding comes from. So if we have like the last couple of years, you know, we we make our funding off the of, off of advances that we provide to our member banks. Well, the last couple of years, our banks have had a lot of money, um, a lot of federal support, a lot of paycheck protection money in their bank accounts, a lot of their um, uh, individual um, customers saving quite a bit in some areas. So they haven't needed us as much. And when our profits are reduced a bit, then that reduces the money we have available. When we have better years, we have more money that goes into that pool to spread that around a bit. So Melody, I might also just have a follow-up question on that. Has it been changed from 7,500 for a while or has that been the standard? It used to be 5,000. 
Um, and from what I understand, it's a very, it, it happened before, we moved to 7,500 before I started. I started with the bank three years ago. So it had previously been 5,000. Um, we had a lot of money at that time. We had um, a couple banner years. So we were just pushing that money out the door to anyone who could use it. Uh, but um, it's always a debate, you know, what has the most impact um, impact to our, our buyers? And then obviously, how can we get the most use out of that money? So it most likely will not increase above 7,500 unless we had some sort of unexpected windfall in the future. Thanks for I that. Can, I can see the chat over here. So someone, uh, Trust Montana asked, are the AHP funds paid via reimbursement? Um, so it's a distribution through the member when there is an award, um, depending on the program. I, I believe, and I'm not an expert, so I apologize if I'm not gonna answer this fully. Uh, the homeownership, um, they are funded upfront for this, but what happens is that they have to submit documentation to show the project's complete and has met the terms. So what actually happens is a recapture. If the project is not actually performing, or doesn't complete, um, or perhaps there's a homeowner who did not meet the threshold that was stated, the project may have to repay if um, something should go wrong. So it doesn't happen very often. It's usually just a performance issue. Um, the funds are awarded um, upfront though for project use. Perfect. Anyone else have some questions for Melody? Any hard hitting topics? I would I would add to that our we do see a lot of funding use. We see our members partner with each other. We see our members um, habitat. We have quite a few habitats that participate in our programs. Um, you know, some of our, some nonprofits are lenders, so they're doing the first mortgage and our members issuing the grant. Um, maybe whole projects through a Habitat is being used or our members are using their um, funding for only their own buyers. It's really very subjective. And that partnership relationship, you know, we have members who don't make first mortgages. So they have access to this funding, but they don't have a way to move it unless they have a partner. So if you're interested, I would strongly encourage you to take a look at our membership and see if there's someone in your area. And if you, you know, they're not quite sure what to do or what you're talking about because they don't know about our program and they don't use it, be happy to connect um, and, you know, have a meeting so we can discuss how to use those funds. That's awesome. Thanks, Melody. I know that um, something that comes up every so often is um, talk about the forgiveness of the Home Start funds because I know that that's a big piece you know, when can they be forgiven for down payment assistance? So it's an interesting animal, actually. The FHFA works really hard to give money back to the buyer. Um, the, the regulatory threshold right now is if there is 2,500 or less owed, then it can be forgiven, but it requires a qualifying event, say if someone's refinancing or selling their home. Um, and that could be a pro rata because it's a percentage of forgiveness per month as, as calculated from when they purchased the home to sale. We also give them credit for principal paid um, over the life of that loan. So we're gonna collect that payoff and give you a little extra credit for um, what you pay down on your first mortgage, your original investment in the property when you purchase the home, your down payment, your um, closing costs. If you're selling your home, we're gonna, or if you're refinancing and paying for those, we're gonna give you credit for that. And um, this is also used for, um, we also have a, uh, opportunity that if there is someone who's going through foreclosure or death of a borrower, um, that can just will just automatically be forgiven with the appropriate paperwork. So it's not tied to the tied to title still. Perfect. And there is another question from Trust Montana in there if you want to um, maybe answer that and then we'll need to wrap up. But sure. any other questions, they could just send you an email or get in touch with us yep. and we can transfer Absolutely. over to them. Absolutely. So if I read this right, um, I think you're saying in a community land trust, if they were reselling an existing unit, um, if the funds could be transferred, could be transferred to the new buyer. Is that what I'm gathering? Uh, yeah, totally. So in community land trust, we always uh, keep the subsidy in the home yep. Uh, yep. and then transfer them to the next uh, to the next income qualified buyer. 
Um, so unfortunately not with this program, we actually do see quite a few community land trusts come to our program too with grant use and that's an eligible property for us. Uh, because this is a one-on-one -on -one transaction with the SHFA, they cannot be carried forward with the buyer. It's simply recapture and repayment, but you may have a buyer who's purchasing and could use this grant with us. They would be considered an eligible buyer and it would be forgiveness for the seller. So the okay. funds are either recaptured or forgiven. They can't be moved forward or tied to a property. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, um, we will need to wrap up the session as uh, that went really quick. It's already 1115, but thank you all for joining us. Um, thanks to Melody for presenting and answering some of those questions. If you have any um, further questions, feel free to reach out to Melody directly. She listed her email and her contact information, or you can reach out to NeighborWorks Montana and we can uh, send your question her way and get y'all connected. Remember, you can always participate in community conversations through the Whova app to chat more. And please take a quick 15 minute break and join us for our table talks next, which start at 1130. Thank Thanks you. for joining everyone. Have a great day. Bye.